there so this we're getting right into the heart of it a couple of different ways right yeah. okay so we could say if we want to if we want to say what is an ai native game and i want to know we're going to come back to this of does that definition matter like where does that what does an ai native game mean in the genre but let's just say we're going to look at a game and decide is this ai native or not we could talk about under the hood, does it use machine learning, right? Does it just use machine learning and generative AI somewhere in the mix, right? That could be one criteria. Yeah. In which case, for example, I would go back to say, does black and white count as an AI native game? You're saying yes, it does or yes? I, I, uh, so yes to your statement. And yes, I think it, it counts, right? Like I think a game where you are literally, you have an RL algorithm in the loop Sounds as AI as you can read, right? <laughs> which, which I would say, like, black and white, I loved that game. And I would yeah. add it as one of the inspiration for me as a gamer and a developer in games. And I think there are many of us. This game comes up in conversations with folks in our space quite regularly. Okay. But there's another point, And black and white might count across all of our definitions. We might use this one. Yeah. Because to your point is, but what's the player experience? Because... There's another part where, like, how in your face does the AI yes. need to be, right? So if you built a new experience, but the player didn't, because there's two, maybe there's two ways to look at it. If you build a new experience, it's, wow, this is, we used the tech in a way that we couldn't have done before, but maybe from the player, it's not as apparent to them, then does it meet the bar? And I say there's maybe two aspects of it. One is you might be able to do something that's truly novel, could not have been done. But maybe the state of the art was so good that a player didn't notice anyways. Yes. Baldur's Gate has Baldur's Gate 3 has so many different endings that at what point did you go, we we have a thousand endings to be we have ten thousand endings or one million endings? Like at what point does a player I don't know, I does it matter? Because maybe it doesn't. I think that's a great point because like I, so I was thinking about this. I think not only do you need so in Baldur's Gate, or like even like way back when Chrono Trigger, like you have all of these uh, endings. There's a number after which it doesn't matter anymore how many more endings there are, right? As long as it feels like it corresponds to the player's actions, you could have used AGI or you could have used a, a crap ton of writers doing meticulous handcrafted work. For the player's perspective, it may have not done a big difference. 